So let's understand COVID antibodies. Now, remember that they are a complex subject and much is still unknown about them. But we'll try to break it down to you in very simple terms. Broadly speaking, antibodies are of two types. So one, which are naturally produced in your body once you get the infection and those which are acquired by the vaccine. All right. So let's talk about the natural ones first. So say you have contracted the virus. Once it enters your body, the first reaction from your body comes in from the T cells present in your blood. Now, consider these T cells at the first line of defense, really. They start acting on the virus within minutes of it entering the body. And if successful, they will stop virus from invading your body. Now, T cells really depends how many they are really depends on how young you are. That really means that the younger you are, the more efficient your T cells are expected to work. That's why kids have this great capacity to fight out the virus in the early stages itself. But if your T cells manage to block the virus, and this is the interesting bit, you might never be able to see them in your antibody count as there is no test available really to test out and to see how many antibodies or memory cells the T cells have managed to bring together. So a lot of people, you will remember, get a mild COVID infection but never get antibodies. It's because the T cells in their body did a fantastic job and stopped the virus right in the beginning. So you got a mild infection and as a fallout of that, because of T cells, you never developed antibodies. In fact, studies also suggest at this point that people who develop T cells immunity are also less likely to get reinfection even with the new variants as well as these T cells are expected to develop a memory and they then remember how to fight out the virus in the future as well. Next, if your T cells have not managed to stop the virus, B cells and their activities will then kick in. Their also primary job really is to fight the infection and they also end up developing a very strong memory. Now, once they start working, your body uh, develops several kinds of antibodies. The first one is IgM. These antibodies are formed in about seven days and they last up to six weeks or so. But remember, these are antibodies that are only fighting out the virus. The next set of antibodies, which are IgG, are the antibodies that are actually the protective ones. They are called neutralizing antibodies and are the most important of the lot. These IgG also are of several kinds, really. Uh, there is one which is uh, called the NAB, that's the neutralizing antibody. There is anti-spike antibody, RBD antibody in specific uh, places as well. So just really consider them as a big football team all working in tandem to fight out the virus. Moving on now to the vaccine acquired antibodies. All vaccines from antibodies uh, that, uh, that are developed are through the B cells. In these also, the overall number of antibodies really do not matter. What matters is those specific protective antibodies that the virus that has been injected in your body has managed to generate. For example, since Covaxin is a whole virus, it will form more antibodies. And Covishield, since it works only on the spike protein, might form less in the number of in the in the absolute number that you might get in your test result. But this does not mean that either of them is less effective because the ones that really matter, remember we spoke about IgG, are the same in mostly all of the vaccines. So the next question really is how many antibodies are formed and how is it that some people develop more antibodies compared to the other? Well, how many body antibodies are formed in your body depend on how healthy your immune system is. The same level of infection can give up to two different amount of antibodies. The number of antibodies will also depend on your age, on your core morbidities. So the healthier you are, the more chances of antibodies in your system. And now the million dollar question really, why do reinfections really happen? Now this can happen if the virus load that you have contracted is really high then even a good amount of antibodies do not really help. They might be developed, even vaccine acquired, they might not be enough to protect you. This is exactly what was seen to happen with the doctors who died despite both the jabs. 
a major reason for that said to be was a sheer hours of exposure that they had to patients who had COVID-19. The virus load, remember, is directly proportional to the time of exposure. That means the more time you spend in presence of the virus, the higher your virus load is going to be. Five minutes to 25 minutes of difference can mean a world of difference into how exactly you will recover from COVID-19. And though in most cases, remember, this is important to remember, uh, the chances are of reinfection very, very low and you will not get a severe disease. But again, we cannot drop our guard. So the bottom line really over here is that even with good amount of antibodies, the primary protection still remains to be your N95 mask or your double mask and the distance that now has to be maintained.